Now, Tomorrow's World is renowned for featuring the great British inventor, determined, single-minded, occasionally slightly eccentric, but always ready to launch his or her great idea onto the world. <laughs> Philippa, the fact is, of course, there's far more to making something a success than simply having the bright idea. So for our first story, I went to see an inventor who's been struggling for 13 years to get his bike into the shops. His story starts in 1985 with a very snappy demonstration on Tomorrow's World. First, like the bike, it's got a rubber belt instead of a chain, so you don't get oil on your suit. And how about this? Like that. Pretty nifty, eh? Well, that was Howard back in 1985. Today, 13 years on, this little machine is even niftier in terms of the way it's designed, the way it's put together. But the real question, of course, is what's happened to it? Why have we seen so little of it around? Why has it taken so long to get this clever, but really very simple folding bike from prototype to the marketplace? Well, I'm off to meet the inventor to see just how the story of this particular invention unfolds. The bike's designer was still a student at Imperial College when he came up with the idea. But only now, 13 years later, is the bike going into production. The story of its journey to market is one of ups and downs and an inventor who never gave up hope. Mark Sanders is the folding inventor whose bike appeared on Tomorrow's World all those years ago. Up until then, I'd been approaching manufacturers but just hadn't got any, any sort of joy from them. But being on Tomorrow's World and getting some media coverage gave the product some credibility, so manufacturers and entrepreneurs approached me. So Mark and his folding bike were on the up. He was being hailed as one of the success stories of the 80s. Even Margaret Thatcher got her hands on one. They sold it around the world, particularly in places like Japan and Europe, and over a five-year period, they sold a total of 25,000 bikes. But early success soon turned to failure. The company expanded production just as the recession hit. And just like the bike, the business folded. I could have given up then and just, just, just stopped saying, OK, that's it, we've had a good run. But whenever I, I actually used the bike myself, I thought, no, this product's too good. Meanwhile, he turned his folding skills in other directions, not all of them obvious. The first thing to turn up, for example, was a folding chopping board on which the Tomorrow's World team focused its very considerable technical expertise. Kate. My kitchen looks like a battlefield after my dinner parties. Chopped vegetables everywhere. And it's amazing that anything ends up in the saucepans at all. But armed with this new chopping board, peace could be declared. And it even folds the other way so you can use it for jars that naturally I prepared earlier. Judith. Actually, it's William. Later on, Mark became a consultant and used his expertise in all things folding to help design, for example, things like this uh, fold-out golf trolley and this patient carriage, which folds down, would you believe, to become an operating table. But he never lost faith in his very first folding design, the bicycle, and that faith has now paid off because two years ago, a businessman who was completely unknown to him came knocking on his door. Meet Barry Emerson, the plastics tycoon who brought the bike back to life. During a, a trip down to the Mediterranean, I wandered around the marinas and I saw an awful, awful lot of folding bicycles rusting on the quays. And I thought to myself, this would be an area where plastics would be at home. The bike that stood out from the crowd was Mark's bike, made with no rusting parts. He liked it so much that when he discovered it was no longer in production, he decided to build it himself. The thing that struck me about the design was its simplistic elegance. And we have redesigned with a completely open book. But funnily enough, we ended up with almost the same frame style and frame shape as the original, which really underlines how right the design was to begin with. So with the folding bike now rolling off the production line, Mark believes the weight has been worth it, possibly even an advantage. Now, ironically, 13 years later, there's a real need for this product. People are cottoning on that, that folding bikes and simple folding bikes like this are just, are just needed. The biggest buzz I get is seeing other people ride it. 
you know, they've chosen to buy it for themselves and they're actually getting a lot of fun out of it and actually it turned into a really useful product for them. Well, that is actually one I remember first time round. But this show's also about your favourite Tomorrow's World memories.